Hey, what's up everybody? Here's another water comparison video. Tonight we're comparing these two waters. First up is Earth 2O, natural spring water. Next up is open water, bottled water. And these are both from Portland, Oregon. In January, I went on a little vacation to Portland for about a week, and I came back with these waters, and I'm gonna do a taste test of both of them and decide which one I think tastes the best. So both of these waters seem to care a lot about the environment. Uh, this one says it's from 100% recycled plastic, and this one says it's good for the environment because it's made out of aluminum, and they say that aluminum cans are 100% recyclable, they can be used over and over and over again, and they say that aluminum is better for the environment because it doesn't fill up the oceans with plastic, and they say that 67% of aluminum cans are recycled, so that makes them better for the environment. And um, these also have a similar pH level. This has a 7.6 pH level. This has a 7 pH level. So they're kind of representative of Portland in a way. Portland is like kind of like a hippie, dippy uh, city. Um, people there seem to really care about the environment, really care about recycling, really care about the earth. Um, Portland's an interesting city. Um, have you ever seen the show Portlandia? This was my first time going there, and I've seen maybe three seasons of that show, and it, it's a good representation. It's an exaggerated representation, but still a good representation of what Portland is like. There's a lot of, like, weird stuff there. Um, this was purchased from a convenience store, from a food fair AG convenience store, and... I think this was two dollars i don't remember exactly but i think it was two dollars this was purchased from the oregon zoo this was three dollars and fifty cents for this one little can it's pretty expensive um i mean it's aluminum so maybe it costs a little bit more to make i mean you can get like a you know a can of soda for like 50 cents sometimes or maybe a dollar at most vending machines so why is it three fifty for a bottle of water? That seems kind of expensive. The Earth 2O water says it's from Opal Springs and it's from Oregon. And if you look closely, it says natural spring water. Then right under that in like a lighter font, it says from community water system. So I think this is spring water, but I think it's spring water that also flows to a community and they like buy it. They pay for it from the community. And so I think it's just interesting that they have like a lighter font that says from the community water system. Um, but I really like this company's website because it's not very flashy. It's very focused on like the actual quality of the water and the source of the water. It's not like fancy, bold, exciting marketing. It's like just facts about the water itself and facts about, you know, the spring and the history of the company and stuff like that. This one, they do care about the environment and everything, but the website seems a lot more flashy, a lot more like marketing based. And I think it's weird that this is, is like so focused on the environment and like helping the earth, but then they sell this bottle on their website and they say that they'll like ship it to you. But wouldn't shipping bottled water be really bad for the environment? Like the cost of like transporting it thousands or hundreds and hundreds of miles and just like the delivery truck pulling up to your house just to like like all the gas used to deliver water around the, the world like if they're care if they're worried about the earth shouldn't they not be shipping individual bottles or small cases of water and um you know if you're really super worried about the environment wouldn't uh reusable bottles you know, be the best, best choice. They even say that on their website. They say, yes, reusable bottles are always the best option, but sometimes you'll find yourself without one. Um, okay, when would you be in a situation where you don't have access to, like, where you can't bring a reusable bottle with you, but you would have access to this, this kind of bottle? Like, I don't understand that, really. Um, and I don't think this is actually reusable. Or you probably could seal it back up probably could twist it shut and reuse it a couple times 
but I don't think this is made to be reused over and over and over and over again for like years. And they also sell um, a sparkling version. They also sell a version in regular cans with a pop top. And the pop top is definitely not reusable. So let's just open these up and uh, do a little taste test. I kind of like this. It looks like, um, you know, like in the show Mad Men, they have uh, like alcohol bottles in a lot of the, the fancy offices. This seems like kind of a bottle you would see in one of those... Um, those office little bars just like with the fancy sides it looks kind of like high-end uh, so anyway let's open these up it is plastic it's not glass but let's open these up and do a taste test comparison earth 2o no smell no bad taste I saw one group of guys on YouTube doing a review of Earth 2.0 on YouTube, and they said it tasted like dirt. I'm not picking up a dirt taste to it at all. No plasticky taste. It tastes almost like distilled water. It tastes really light. Okay. Here is the open water it sounded like there was a like a carbonation almost i could hear like air leaving the bottle when i opened it i don't know if the microphone picked that up at the zoo they did sell the sparkling version of this one time i drank some emergency canned water that I bought on eBay and it had like a super, super strong metallic taste to it because it was in like a uh, tin can and it had like a just super strong, awful metal taste to it. So a lot of the times when I drink out of uh, metal cans, I worry it's going to have the taste. This doesn't have that super strong taste, maybe like a really mild metal taste to it, but not super strong at all. Pretty, pretty clean taste to it. Good, um, pure water taste to it. <clears throat> hey, let's do the uh, pH test and see how accurate their marketing is. All right, here's the results of the pH test. That's earth on the left, open on the right. I am colorblind. So you guys look at the color yourself and decide which pH level you think they are. They both claim to be about a seven. Earth says about a 7.5. What do you guys think? All right, I guess I'll tell you guys a little bit more about Portland while I finish up the water. My girlfriend and I went out to Portland, and we stayed with my girlfriend's sister. We stayed at her house, and um, her sister has several roommates, and uh, they're all nudists. So that made the trip kind of interesting. Um, they just walk around naked all the time. And we went up to a nudist resort while we were up there. Um, my girlfriend and I are not nudists, so this was all new to us. Um, at the resort, we went into, like, a, a hot tub, naked. Um, other than that, we weren't naked around them at all during the trip. Uh, a big part of Portland is the food. There's a lot of really good food out there. Um, it's a big thing they're known for. We went, we went to a place called Acropolis. They had a two-pound hamburger that I had. It's two pounds of meat. That's not, that's two pounds is not including all the extra toppings on top of it. Um, I couldn't even come close to finishing it. It was a lot of meat. It was a big burger. It was like 10 bucks. Um, we went to a place called Lardo. <laughs> they had a uh, really good burger. We had a lot of burgers when we were out there. We went to um, their science center, which was neat. One of, uh, it was very similar to the Pittsburgh Science Center. It was kind of boring, actually, but it was neat, I guess. We went to the Oregon Zoo. We went there because it was the light-up night. They had a bunch of, like, Christmas lights all over the zoo. It was neat seeing that. And um, 
we went on a train at the zoo and saw a bunch of lights on the train and we uh, went to a dispensary, a marijuana dispensary out there. Uh, I guess it's legal out there. So um, I bought some edibles and did some edibles. Um, I, I've smoked weed in the past, but this is my first time doing like marijuana edibles. Um, so I ended up doing, I think, 10 times like the amount they recommended doing for the edibles. So I got really, really high. I actually was high when I bought this water from the convenience store. Um, th this convenience store was like a block from where they live. And so I started feeling the effects pretty strongly at the convenience store. And by the time we made it back to my girlfriend's sister's house, I could like barely walk. I could barely talk, very barely walk for like, I don't know, a couple hours. Um, I was really, really high. Um, I don't get high very often. It's, um, I don't know. I just feel dizzy and, I don't know, light lightheaded. And I don't feel great. Uh, nothing against people who do it. And I do it, like, occasionally, maybe once a year or something. But I don't do it that often. A big reason is just cost. I can't afford to smoke marijuana. I don't have the money to do that very often. Um, but it's a nice, just different treat, doing something different. Um, and I think the <laughs> convenience store owner could tell I was high. He was like being nice, but kind of encouraging us to just get out of there. Okay. Earth water is pretty good. These both have, like, a very light, very, like, light taste to them, light flavor. They're not, like, heavy waters. Which is not a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just pointing out how they taste. Yeah, and, um, her roommates were just interesting, like... Within a couple minutes of meeting them, they were talking about their chakras, and um, they're super into like composting and recycling and helping the environment. And um, I think they didn't like that my channel had thousands of videos of me using bottled water because I think they're really against wasting plastic. Um, so I think they're happy that I switched to doing cups mainly, but. They were still upset about that a little bit. Um, but it was an interesting little trip to Portland. And we had a good time. And I think that out of these two, I think my favorite is the Earth 2O water. They're both good. They're both, you know, getting a thumbs up. No bad taste. And like I was saying, I think there's just a very super, super slight metallic taste to this. Um, you can see the bottle's a little bent up, because again, I had to, um, send these back in my, um, checked bag, so I guess they were bouncing around and got dinged up a little bit. It's also weird, I have to buy the bottle, and then carry it around the zoo for, like, the whole day, and not drink it. It's weird spending $3 on a bottle of water, and then not drinking it. Congratulations, Earth 2.0. You're moving on to the next round. Um, have any of you guys ever tried either of these? What do you guys think? Do you like them? I think the Earth 2.0 is a little bit more popular. The, the, neither of them are super popular, but I think this is a little bit more well-known. When I was just Googling this, I didn't see a ton of like people talking about it. Let's do a taste, um, a strength test. How sturdy is the bottle? I mean, aluminum is good. It's cool that um, 
it can be reused over and over and over again. But again, my reviews are um, my taste. So thanks for watching, everybody. I think this is the first review I shot in uh, 2019. I uploaded one I shot in 2018 in January, but this is the first one I shot in 2019. Got some new sheets. Not much else going on with me. My back's been really hurting lately. Um, just random times. I'm trying to figure out what's causing it to hurt so much. My dad and my uncle and my other uncle and my grandma all had back surgery. Um, I think my dad had it in his 30s. I'm in my 30s now, so I wonder if I need a back surgery. I've been going, I went to a physical therapist today. Um, they gave me some like exercises to do with the help with the back pain, but um, I might need surgery on it at some point um yeah just like twisting it hurts a lot sometimes like standing up hurts sometimes sitting down hurts sometimes not not always but sometimes it's just like excruciating really sharp pain and um it's, it's been the past like basically since I got back from the trip it's been, been a lot of pain um, when we were on the trip, we slept on an air mattress, so I wonder if that made it worse in some way, my back, um, but actually in, in the morning when I woke up from the air mattress, it felt, my back felt fine, like, every morning, uh, it didn't start hurting until we got back to Pittsburgh, um, and it was hurting even before the trip, too, so I don't think that was the cause of it. I should start like a journal or something for my back pain and um, keep track of when it's hurting and when it's not so I can narrow down like if there's something causing it or if it's just you know a family history thing for the back pain. Do you guys ever have a back pain? Do you guys ever um, did your back ever hurt? Got some uh, some wood stain there, on my arm. I stained that um, little table behind me, little nightstand. Sanded it and put some wood stain on it, so it's a little darker than before. I got some on my arm. I kind of like re refinishing wood. Um, it's like rewarding it's like um you know you, you waste time on the internet or I, I do i'm talking about myself i waste time on the internet and like sometimes i'll spend a whole day just wasting time on the internet and i don't have anything to show for it um or you know waste time playing video games and other than like a little score inside the game other than that you don't really have anything to show for it but i like you know, doing woodwork and doing construction stuff. I like that at the end of the day, you feel um, like you accomplished something because you have something to show for it. And um, the legs were kind of loose. I tightened them up and um, kind of like how it turned out. It still has a smell of uh, like polyurethane on it. If you guys have never, um, 
never refinished any furniture. I, I'd recommend checking it out, getting into it. It's pretty easy to learn how to refinish furniture. Um, and, you know, you can go to Ikea and, like, spend a hundred bucks on a table or whatever it costs at Ikea. And it's going to be made out of, like, whatever that stuff's called. Um, particle board or whatever Ikea uses. Like, they basically take a bunch of sawdust and a bunch of glue and they make, like, fake wood. And it, I don't know, maybe it'll last, maybe it'll last you eight years. Maybe it'll last you eight, eight years and then just start falling apart. Or you can go on Craigslist, buy some beat up furniture made out of real hard wood, like old, old lumber, like real hard wood. Um, you can find it really cheap on Craigslist if it has a bunch of scratches on it, a bunch of dings and scratches and stains on it. So you buy it cheap. Like, you can get stuff so cheap on Craigslist if it's covered in scratches. Or go to a Goodwill store. Get some beat-up furniture that, that's made out of real hard wood. Sand it. Restain it. Put some polyurethane on it. It's going to last you a lot longer than the IKEA stuff. Um, and it's surprisingly very easy to learn how to refinish furniture. Just, you know, get some sandpaper some stain, some, some polyurethane. There's videos on YouTube showing you how to do it. It's pretty easy to learn. Um, with that hardwood stuff, like, I'm a huge guy, but I can stand on that. I don't have to worry about it falling apart. You know, with Ikea furniture, it's held together with, like, little tiny screws. Like, little, sometimes, like, plastic screws and stuff. I wouldn't want to stand on that. I'd be worried it would fall apart. See that this shelf behind me? Um, pretty sure that's particle board with like a fake wood exterior. Just like fake wood exterior, like printed on top of it. Um, I put up one of those shelves behind me um, in my kitchen area, and it's it lasted like a year because the kitchen area has. You know, more humidity, it has more um, moisture in the air from cooking. And so it's already, like, the wood is, like, bubbling up in some parts. And it's, like, after a year, the wood is, like, falling apart. Um, but if I had used real hard wood, like, good quality, real lumber, <clears throat> it would have lasted a lot longer. So I kind of regret that. I should have just, you know, used some real wood. The TSA inspected my bag again on the way back from the trip. Um, like, those are not the only two bottles I got for the trip. So, <laughs> I basically had, like, half my suitcase full of, like, just random bottles of water. Because um, I have to bring backups. Because whatever bottle wins, it's going to move on to the next round. So I have to bring extras of each bottle um, in case they win. So... Just like my trip to um, San Francisco, I came back with a case full of water, and um, <clears throat> when I got back, I opened the case, and it's has a little note inside that says it was inspected by the TSA, and it's not a coincidence, it's definitely because of all the water inside. Like, it, it's going through an x-ray machine, it probably looks super suspicious, just bringing a bunch of, like, bottles of water. Um... <laughs> Especially with, like, the metal cans going through an x-ray machine. They don't know what that is. It probably looks like a bomb or something super suspicious. So, there's like I said, like I said there's a little note inside that says, um, your, your luggage has been inspected by the TSA. It doesn't matter. I mean, I'm, I'm not... Oh, wait, actually, it, it did kind of worry me because I brought back some edibles. And, um, I had them in my luggage. So I was worried that if the TSA inspected my luggage, 
or, or whoever inspects it, if they inspected my luggage, they would see the edibles and um, I might get in legal trouble or something. Because I think the edibles are legal in Portland and in Colorado and in some cities and some states. Um, but federally, they're still illegal. So if the TSA is a federal organization, I was, I was a little concerned that they might um, care. But it was, I only brought back a tiny amount um, just to give to some family members who I thought might want them. Um, but um, but they inspected my bag and they didn't care. They didn't care about the edible, edible marijuana. Um, and I, I googled it first and the internet basically reassured me that they wouldn't care. Um, I mean, I think the TSA is mainly focused on safety, not, um, they're not the Department of, I don't know, food, FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. They're, diff they're different things, so they didn't care. Oh, YouTube, um... YouTube's been shutting down my AdSense on some of my channels recently. Uh, I, I can still put ads on John Drinks Water, but, like, my Moldy Toaster Media channel, they, um, they shut down the ads. Like, I'm not, like, a YouTube partner on there anymore. And some of my other ones, like the YouTube Remix channel, I'm not a YouTube, um, partner on that channel anymore. They said I, um... For the YouTube Remix one, they said my videos don't qualify because they use other people's content. But that doesn't sound right to me because it's used under fair use. It's all re remixed and re-edited. It's all, it's all, all the videos I upload are unique videos. I'm not just stealing other people's videos. But, but I was making so little money with that channel, it's not even worth fighting with them about. I, I should just be happy that the channel itself wasn't taken down. It, only the... YouTube partnership was removed. Um, and then... They said the same thing about the uh, Moldy Toaster Media one. Um, but again, I guess I should just be happy that... Um, that I still have the channel. With the YouTube Remix one, I can reapply for... No, no. With the YouTube Remix one, it's basically gone forever. Because I think you have to have, like something like 4,000 hours a month of view time, and the YouTube Remix one doesn't meet those requirements. Um, but on the Moya Toaster Media one, <clears throat> it was... the partnership was taken away like a week ago, so after 30 days I can reapply, uh, because I think I meet the all the partnership qualifications for, like, view time, and, um whatever, like, I think you need a thousand subscribers or something. I think I meet all the qualifications to reapply. But, it still sucks. I mean, like I said, I wasn't, I was only making, like, I don't know, maybe 20, 10 or 20 bucks a month. But, um, just on the principle of it, like, I, I spent all the time making those videos, and now I'm not making any money on them at all. Um, kind of sucks but again I should be happy that the channel is still up um, mm, I've been working on losing some weight this past week so like I was saying my, my back's been hurting so this is kind of gross and kind of embarrassing. I don't even know why I'm telling you guys this. I assume almost nobody's even watching this. So I'll just share it anyway. Um, my back's been hurting. So, like I said, twisting is causing my back to hurt. So, whenever I go to the bathroom, you have to, like, twist. You, know, you twist and reach down to wipe your butt. That's been hurting a lot because of my back pain that I was telling you guys about. 
um, like wiping my butt has been hurting my back a lot. So I've been eating less, so I have to go to the bathroom less. <laughs> so I don't hurt my back. So like, I'm like losing weight. So I'm losing weight as like a side effect of back pain, kind of. But my doctor says I need to lose weight anyway, so. Um, and I do. I'm very overweight. Um, so. Look at all this, like, dandruff. Holy crap, look at all this dandruff. Um, let me get this thing. This is gross. Um. Yeah, I need to lose weight. I think a lot of, like, uh, most of the problems in my life boil down to being overweight and, um, lack of money. So, losing weight, I mean, it's solvable if I just eat less. Ooh, look at this dance. That's so gross. so much dandruff that's better that's that's still there but whatever um so yeah i should lose some weight um oh i tried these um these things it's like a appetite suppressant it actually works you know um, I think Kim Kardashian advertised like these lollipops that you lick and it helps with your appetite and um, I got these which have actually been working like if I'm hungry I just eat one of these little things and then I'm like not hungry like my just my stomach just isn't hungry it doesn't send signals to my brain telling me to eat stuff it lasts like I don't know like uh an hour and then if i get hungry again i just eat another one um and i've been taking apple cider vinegar to help with um an app appetite suppression um it's been working like i've been eating very little this past week and um but that's probably not healthy to do that forever probably just a fad it's not gonna last forever what time is it it's 2 a.m. Hmm. Hmm. I've been taking so much um, aspirin Look at this. This is uh, Motrin also. I've, I've had... This past month, I've had basically this whole bottle of um, aspirin and Motrin. A bunch of aspirin. Cause, um, just because of the back pain. Like, it's been hurting so much, I just take three aspirin, you know. And then... A few hours later, if it hurts, take three more aspirin. It's probably, um, I think they say it's bad for your, like, liver and kidney, but, I mean, what else am I supposed to do for the pain? I don't, I, I, I went to the doctor, I went to a back doctor, um, and he didn't really take me seriously. He said I should go to the physical therapist, which I did today, but... <clears throat> but when when I was at the doctor, it wasn't in severe pain, so I, he didn't really take me seriously. I don't think because um because it wasn't hurting when I was there. So I I think a lot of like drug addicts go to places like that to back doctors, and they lie about their back pain just so they can get like strong pain medicine, um like oxy codone or whatever it's called I don't even want that I, I don't even want that I just want 
I want to cure the problem. I don't want the pain to go away. Um, I'm just taking aspirin. I, I don't want to take like oxy, whatever, because people get addicted to that so easily. I don't want to even start that. I don't want to become dependent on that. Um, so the doctor says, before we could do any kind of surgery or anything at all, I have to do the physical therapy first. And um, before he would even consider the surgery. But the surgery helps like my, my relatives for, for their back. So maybe it would help me. I, I, just, want, I just want it to be fixed. I don't want... Um, like, taking pain meds is just like a temporary fix. I want like a permanent thing. Um, oh, since my last review, I turned I turned 30. On January 16th, I turned 30. Um, a lot of you guys don't seem to believe that. What do you think I'm like 45 or something? But no, I'm I'm 30. In some other video, I showed my driver's license and proved it. I'm 30. Um, but my roommate Don was asking what it feels like to be 30, and I said I feel like I'm 60 because because of the back pain. Because I the past couple weeks I just barely even walk around. <clears throat> I'm surprised I made it to 30. I remember, like, <laughs> I I specifically remember being 15 and th thinking I would never even make it to being 20 years old. Um, and I remember being 20 and specifically thinking that I would never make it to being 30. And now I'm 30, and I don't think I'm going to make it to being 40. But I've been wrong in the past, so who knows? Maybe I'm wrong again. I just, I don't know. I always have this mindset that, like, I'm going to die soon. One way or another. Isn't that nice? You can see, like, the, uh, like, look, you can see the, um, the light in my glasses, the little reflection. Doesn't that, uh, look professional? Like a music, it's like a music video. Except I'm wearing glasses, not sunglasses. Um, the weather is nicer today it's, two days ago it was freezing it was like negative I don't know 10 or something and so um, like I manage I manage an Airbnb for, for my main source of income the pipes froze. The pipes in the like in the building froze. So they were calling me and complaining that there was no cold water. The hot water still worked because the hot water was keeping the pipes hot and they didn't freeze, but the cold water didn't exist because the pipes froze. So so it's warmer today. I'm glad uh, they unfroze. I'm glad the pipes didn't uh, crack when they froze because that would have been a big mess um, yeah I've been doing the Airbnb like over six months now it's kind of going well and kind of not going well like <laughs> like one of the rooms we charge like $36 a night and nobody's in it tonight. Nobody's scheduled to be in it any time in the future. Um, and I don't know why people are not booking it. Because we have, we have okay ratings. We have okay reviews. Um, and our price is like... Our price is lower than anybody else in the area. So it's a really good location for an Airbnb. A lot of the other people in the area are charging like $80... $90. There's some people in the area charging like $150 a night. And we're charging 32 and people are not booking ours. Um, the other people, the people who are charging like $150 a night, their place is definitely nicer than ours. Um, like, there's no doubt about it. Like, they have like stainless steel fridges and like marble counters 
and they have really nice stuff which we don't have at, at our airbnb but um but for that much of a price difference i'm shocked that people are not booking ours right now um because i'm generally a cheap person so i see a cheaper price and i'm like oh I'll, I'll automatically go with that but i think a lot of the people in the world are not as cheap as me so they want just higher quality instead of um just the cheapest price so i don't know i don't know what to do maybe i should um like invest thousands of dollars on like a marble counter and a nice fridge and nice furniture so people would pay more but but then if they don't then it's like money wasted and I can't I don't really have money to afford any of that stuff right now so I don't really need an option I think Airbnb does a lot of stuff to, like, manipulate the, ho the host's mindset. Like, I think they have algorithms that choose the order that the listings are shown in. So, I think they maybe they show the, the more expensive ones at the top of the list... Because Airbnb makes its money off a of percentage of what people pay. So it's better, it's in their best interest for people to go to a better, more expensive Airbnb instead of a cheaper one like mine. So I think sometimes they they might put mine at the bottom of the list. Um, even though it's a better value for the guest. And even though, even though it's better price. Even though it's... Um, you know, well reviewed and stuff. But like I was saying, there's good and bad to, to doing this Airbnb stuff, but sometimes I get, you know, sometimes the guests complain about stupidest stuff. Like, if one guy sent me a message and he said that the bed was making a squeak noise. Like when he was like, whenever I move, it makes a squeak noise. He's like, can you come up and fix it? So, <laughs> I you know, put some tools in my backpack, put some WD-40 in there. I walked all the way up to the Airbnb. It's like a block away from here. I was like, um, all right, let me take a look at the, um, you know, your bed. Let me see if I can tighten some screws or put some WD-40 on it. And then, you know, after I got up there, I told him that. He's like, nah, it's not a big deal. But then, if it's not a big deal, why did you message me about it? <laughs> you know, why did you have me uh, come all the way up there? You know, you're wasting my time. Like, And... Like I said, because of my back pain, sometimes just walking is, like, very painful. So maybe, maybe I'm over, um, complaining or something. But, it's like, it's like a great job when there's no problems. Um, when there's no problems, you know, sometimes we have people who book for four months at a time... And we hardly ever even hear from them in the whole four months. And they don't create a mess. And they don't um, cause any damage. They just pay their rent. We hardly ever hear from them the whole four months. Those people are great. They're um, fantastic. And then other people, you know, just complain almost every day about stupid little things. Um... Like, I don't know, they'll send me a message saying the internet's not working. And then by the time I get up there, it's working fine. So, like, why didn't they wait five minutes before sending me a message? Um, for our New Year's, we had 
<laughs> some young girl book and she threw a party like for for her new year's um we ended up having to call the police on her um because our airbnb has a list of rules and parties are not allowed um and there's like quiet hours after 11 p.m and because she was booking on new year's i specifically asked her before before approving her booking if she was ha planning on having a party or something because she, she was also from pittsburgh i'm in pittsburgh the airbnb is in pittsburgh um so it looks suspicious that she was only booking for one night and why would she book for an airbnb if she lives in pittsburgh so i so i specifically asked her ahead of time if she was planning on having a party she promised me she was not um and then we ended up getting a bunch of phone calls about people complaining about the noise around uh you know 11 p.m on uh new year's eve and so we went there and there were like 30 people <laughs> at some big party she threw um and she caused damage and she um left a huge mess it took hours and hours to clean it all up and um guests like her are bad <laughs> she's an example of a bad guest um i think she's the only like i'm I'm pretty kind when it comes to reviews. She's the only guest I've had to write a negative review about. And, um, like, she damaged some of the furniture, and um, she was a bad guest. I got this, um, this thing from Aldi. It's called a, a TENS unit. It has these little, like, electrodes. That you can, like, stick to yourself. It's like little sticky pads that you connect the electrodes to. You stick them on like your muscles and then you turn this on and it like flexes your muscles automatically for you. And um, it's kind of interesting. It's I just bought it out of the blue because it says it helps with like muscle. It says it helps with pain. And um, I was in so much back pain at the time. I saw it at Aldi. It's like 30 bucks. I just bought it out of the blue. Um, without putting much thought into it, but it's very interesting. It's, um, I think it's just interesting having your muscles, like, pulsing up and down on their own. Um, normally I don't do much, like, impulse buying like that, but, um, I'm kind of glad I did. It's like, an, it's just a neat experience. If you've, never, if you've never tried one, I recommend just trying it. It's just because it's neat. And I think it's it helps with the pain a little bit. Cause I don't think it removes any pain, but I think it's like a distraction, kind of. And just helps you um, not think about the pain very much. I got some new sheets. These are from my girlfriend's sister bought me these. Um, so I switched from a full bed to a king bed after we started going out. Didn't have any sheets. Why is anybody actually watching this? Why are you watching me talk about getting sheets as a gift?
I think this is going to be a bad year for me financially. Um, in some of my previous videos, I talked about making money from selling books that I published. Um, I use the website called createspace.com. And so CreateSpace was owned by Amazon. And um, Amazon also owned Kindle Direct Publishing. And Amazon realized, oh, we have these two book publishing companies. Why do we have two, two companies? And they merged them together. And um, because of the merger, basically, long story short, I'm not um, like making money from them. Because I was, like, I, I have a, basically I have a ban from Kindle, Kindle Direct Publishing. And, um, because they merged, now I'm banned from both of them. Like, CreateSpace turned into Kindle Direct Publishing. And so, in 2018, a big, a huge, basically, I think 2015 until 2018, a big source of my income was through book publishing, and now it's not going to be a source of income anymore. So now, and YouTube's been shutting down, um, I'm making, making barely anything from YouTube, um, so I'm basically down to just the Airbnb, but like I said, people, you know, just aren't booking it that often. And I think, you know, if we get a few bad reviews, it could just be shut down any at any moment. It could just be over. Um, and then I would just, you know, all my sources of income would be gone. And with my back pain, that's really affecting me with the Airbnb business because doing the Airbnbs is such physical work. Like, I have to go up there and flip over people's beds and change their sheets and mop the floors and um you know scrub the toilet scrub the shower it's like physical work that <clears throat> puts me in excruciating pain because of my back so um I just don't know how much longer that's gonna last like I was up there um yesterday cleaning a room just one room took me like two and a half hours because I have to work for five minutes and then basically rest for five minutes because my back just starts hurting so much and um it's not good And I can't really get a full-time job right now because sometimes the Airbnb people call me out of the blue and need help with something. Like sometimes, one time the lock just stopped working. So they call me out of the blue. I have to rush up there and help them out. But if I had a full-time job, I wouldn't be able to help these people out. And our ratings would go down even quicker. So... Last year I was talking about, um, I did a, like a movie review video where I talked about just movies I've been seeing at the theater because I had movie pass. Um, I can't believe that still exists. <laughs> um, I can't believe they've gone, they have not gone bankrupt yet. I predicted that they would and I was wrong. They still exist somehow. But anyway, I, sh I closed my movie pass account. And, um, that's given me a lot more free time. 
you remember that that movie Brewster's Millions? I think this is the movie I'm thinking of. But in Brewster's Millions, like the the rich guy smokes a cigarette and gets caught by his father, and the father locks him in a, in a closet with a, a whole case of cigarettes and says, you're not coming out of this closet until you smoke this whole case of cigarettes. And um, if I'm remember cr- remembering correctly, um, he did, and then he never wanted to smoke a cigarette again because he was just so sick of cigarettes. That's kind of how I feel about uh, going to the movie theater. I had moved... Like, I used to love going to the movie theater. And then I had movie pass. And I went like. Maybe 15 times a month on average. Just constantly going to the movie theater. And I feel like that. That kid who smoked a whole case of cigarettes. Um, that's, that's how I feel about the movie theater. Like. It used to be a treat. And now. Because I. Because I was going so much kind of just sick of it I'm kind of glad um, I don't have movie pass anymore I think I went to like 190 movies in a year at the theater so it's like always that almost every other day yeah I have a lot more free time now not doing that but at the same time, so it was um a neat year. <clears throat> it's the first time I've walked out of the theater like, if I wasn't enjoying a movie. Because normally I'm so cheap. You know, I would just stay for the whole movie, even if I wasn't enjoying it. But with Movie Pass, um, got to feel like a rich person and just walk out sometimes. That's like the whole benefit of money. It's just um, like it gives you power to you know to not do stuff you're not enjoying. I spend so much time just fantasizing about um, being rich, and um, really the main benefit is just um, not having to work, (laughs) obviously. I say that as if it's like a profound thing, but super obvious. I think being, you know, like a billionaire is um, sort of of the closest you can come to having a superpower, like in in real life. You know, there's probably a comic book where somebody's superpower is making stuff just magically appear out of thin air. That's sort of what being incredibly rich is. You can just make stuff appear. You know, you just go online and order whatever you want and just make it appear in front of you. So it's almost like having a superpower. I think it's like I think it's like beard dandruff. It's not head dandruff.
the Portland trip was a good test of um, my girlfriend and I's relationship. Um, like, normally we're together for, you know, a day or two or maybe three, maybe four days at a time. We've been dating for like five months and, um, you know, normally we're today, we're together for a couple of days at a time, but for the Portland trip, we were together basically nonstop for the whole week. And then for like basically a week after the trip. So we were basically together, like, you know, in the same room, a few feet apart from each other, nonstop for 99.9% .9 of the time, like, it, and basically, unless one of us went to the bathroom, or, um, I mean, we even showered together a couple times, but, unless one of us went to the bathroom to use the toilet, we were basically together, like, non-stop, and, um, I think it was a good test of our relationship, um, and we, you know, we didn't fight or really argue about anything, and, um, it seems to be getting, out, getting along pretty well. Um, and sometimes we argue over little stuff, but not really fighting. I screwed up one of the, the tables at the Airbnb. I used some wipes like this. Um, these are little cleaning wipes, you know, like the Clorox wipes. And um, these have alcohol on them as their main, you know, whatever it is, their main um, active ingredient for cleaning and uh, I used some of those to wipe down a wooden table and I actually ruined the finish <laughs> apparently you're not supposed to use alcohol wipes on wooden furniture um, I think it's fine on wood like this with a shiny finish because there's like so much polyurethane or whatever on it that uh, it protects the wood and it protects the stain, but at the Airbnb there was a little coffee table without much polyurethane on it, so I rubbed it. Well, I actually accidentally rubbed off the stain, the finish, with the the alcohol wipes. So I guess I was just telling you guys about refinishing furniture. I guess I have to refinish that coffee table at some point. Got a list of um, ideas for water videos, like things to like randomly talk about, or like kind of like vlogs. Um, I should. 
Maybe, maybe I should um, do more of those vlog type videos. Like I have um, super like really bad eyesight, and I've it's been on my list for like two years to make a vlog about it, just going into depth about how bad my eyes are, how much like fix my um, my life. I keep delaying that. I I think I'm just overthinking it. Um, so I'd like to make a visual like trying to show normal normal sighted people what my sight looks like I think I'm just overthinking it um just want to make it as realistic as possible but I have to figure out how to do like visual effects that I don't know how to do because I don't know how to fully demonstrate how bad my eyes are um but I think if I just did a blur effect or something, it would be um, just as effective as, as far as um, storytelling goes, as far as getting the point across goes. I was just saying, I, maybe I, I was saying I should do more vlogs. Maybe I shouldn't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Sometimes I think I should just stop making videos altogether. That's even the point. <clears throat> like, if it, it, they're not really making me any money. People don't really take them seriously. They, um, <laughs> like on that React channel, they just made fun of the, the channel. I don't think that I'm, I don't think I'm that good of a storyteller. I think a lot of people. <laughs> I think most good YouTubers are really good storytellers. And people subscribe to them because of the person's personality not because of like the actual videos themselves I don't think I just I just don't think I have a very likable personality um I don't think I'm like enthusiastic enough and exciting enough A lot of, I mean, a lot of people ask me what I'm going to do after episode 10,000 of John Drinks Water, and I seriously consider just stopping, just doing 10,000 and then just never making a video again, call it quits. Like, I think I, when I was in high school, I used to have so much fun making videos, and now... I don't have the energy for it anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I was in high school, I used to do these animations. Like, like just stay up all night and do like a minute long, or two minute long little cartoon thing. Like in one day. Now, if I wanted to do a cartoon today, it would probably take me like months and months of planning and I would just overthink it and um, it would just end up not being fun to make and being not good. Um, cause I, have so, I have so many other commitments in life and back pain. And when you're in high school, you can just ask friends, um, just like, hey, do you want to be on this video? And they're like, yeah, let's do it. And then you just do it right away, and then 
the video is shot and it's done. And you edit it that day and it's done. I remember... <laughs> I did that interview with Dawn. It took him months to actually finally agree to do it. It's like, when you get older, no one wants to be in videos. And... It's just everything takes longer. Alright, I have a script written for new everyday repairs. I have a whole, I have a big list of ideas. I used to do this series, Everyday Repairs. Um, but a big thing stopping me is I just I'm too fat now. I, I weigh too much. Um, it's been set. It's been like <laughs> I guess it's been like eight years <laughs> since I've made one of those. And I just don't fit into the outfit anymore. I bought that uh, construction little hat there. Because I'm also, I'm bald now. Like, I'm more bald than I was in the last episode. So, I figure I could just wear that construction hat to cover my being bald. That would solve that. But, as far as the outfit goes, I just don't fit into it um, anymore. <laughs> yeah, jeez. I think it's the last one I shot was in 2011. That was 2009. It's been like eight years. Holy crap. Time goes by fast. <sighs> like, that's the same thing. Like I was saying about just making videos, like... I used to just do that in my free time, and like... You know, I'd write a script for every repairs, and then a few days later, I'd be done shooting it, done editing it, have some cool intro animations and stuff. <laughs> now it's like eight years since since I shot one. <laughs> Holy crap! But like I was saying, I'm so fat now. I don't think people would even recognize me. They'd be like, "Who's this new guy hosting the show?" Or, like, the first comment would be, like, you know, I'd put I'd put a bunch of work into it. First comment would be, like, oh, boy, you sure let yourself go, or something like that. It would just crush me. the back pain there have been some times where I just turn my neck <laughs> just turn my neck and my lower back hurts a lot that's not normal that's not good that is not good I do like this light. I think I like I look good, don't I? Don't I look pretty? Oh, it's it's the light and the camera angle. It's like looking down on me. If the camera was if the camera was down here looking up on me, you would see like a big double chin. But with the low facing camera, kind of hides that. It looks good. What are you what are you guys up to? I feel like I've been really um slacking on being a member of the water drinking community lately. 
I used to um, comment on people's videos a lot and stay up to date with what, what they're all doing, what they're all vlogging about and stuff. <laughs> Excuse me. But I feel like the past couple of months, I mean, basically, since I started dating my girlfriend, I'm just having a time. Um, so, nothing else to say about that. I mean, it is what it is. Hmm. This is pretty raw. You go. Just put this up on it unedited. No one's gonna watch it anyway. This is why I don't vlog, because this is what I do every day. I just sit at my computer, don't do anything. If I vlogged every day, this is what it would be. Just me sitting here doing nothing. I was talking about making that table better. I actually made it worse. <laughs> I was talking about um, tightening the screws on it. It's actually not level now. <laughs> I tightened the screws and <laughs> it, like it moved one of the legs a little bit. So now it's not level. The back right one is like half an inch higher than the front right one. I think I have to get a saw and um, chop off like half an inch of the leg just to make it level.
Do you guys ever wish you were dead? Hmm. Sometimes I'm in so much back pain, I just wish I was dead. I don't want to kill myself. I don't want to... Cause it's too easy to screw it up. Um, sometimes I wish I was dead. Because, I mean... We, we, all the pain would be gone. But, obviously... You shouldn't do it, though. You guys shouldn't do it. It would obviously be... Just last resort. Hmm. I do think a lot about how I would do it. Um. One way. One way you could do it is um. If you worry about screwing it up, you could um. <clears throat> You know, one way of doing it is taking a bunch of pills, but then you can screw that up. Um, like, you can survive taking a bunch of um, pills. You can survive that. Um, but another way is to jump off, like, a, you know, a big, tall building or a big bridge or something. But you can survive that also. People jump off huge... You know, people have jumped out of airplanes and survived... <laughs> Um, so you can screw that up. You could shoot yourself in the head. But people have survived that, too. So what a horrible thing to happen if you shoot yourself in the head and then you survive. And your life's even worse than before. So I thought a good, like, fail, you know, a good, um, way to make sure you don't screw it up. So take a bunch of pills and then like jump off a building and then on your way down like shoot yourself in the head and um that way if one of them fails at least one of the others would um finish you and then you wouldn't you wouldn't risk surviving um That's silly. That's like I don't know, like a plot to a movie or something. Some it's like a Coen Brothers thing somebody would do. It's not something anyone would do in real life. It's too overcomplicated. Well, they say, they say, um, the carbon monoxide poisoning is a, um, peaceful way to go. Because you don't, you don't feel any pain. Um, you just fall asleep, kind of, and then die. But then, a problem with carbon monoxide poisoning is, <sighs> the person who finds your body could also die too if, if like a, if the room is full of carbon monoxide then whoever finds you could suffocate also so you have to figure out a way um, to warn them like put up a sign or something um, to warn them but don't do this don't don't kill yourself um Call that number if you need help or something. I don't. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not. I'm not gonna kill myself. Don't worry. Um. I'm not going, I'm not going to, don't worry. <clears throat> I should have one of these things.
They're kind of like spicy. I'm taking um, turmeric. Turmeric is supposed to help with inflammation, but it hasn't been working at all. I was thinking maybe the reason my back hurts is because of um, like the spinal cords inflamed. So I thought some. The internet said turmeric might help, but it has not been helping at all. It's been feeling the same since I started taking it. I've got um, a big list of video ideas. I've got a big list. I don't want to show you all of them, but anyway. I mean, I've got several lists of video ideas. I was thinking a cool idea for a video would just be um, me just reading my list of ideas. Because it would probably be like, I don't know, several hours long. So it probably wouldn't get many views anyway. So it wouldn't really spoil much. I thought that'd be funny. Because if somebody stole one of my video ideas. Or, not stole, but... You know, did the same thing. And I could be like, Hey, look at this video. I thought of that idea first. shop at Nordstrom's I have a gift card for two dollars and 79 cents do any of you want this gift card It's not worth um, selling. Here are the numbers. You can have this gift card if you're watching this. Two dollars and seventy-nine cents. It's all yours. Let me scratch off the thing for you. Here's the. Uh, your numbers so whoever sees this first and happens to shop at Nordstrom's feel free to use this card I don't care I don't think there's anything at Nordstrom's that's what is it two dollars and seventy cents so um, good luck finding something think you have to do it online because um, uh, I don't know I don't think that would work in the store because you don't have the physical card um, and there's you know there's websites where you can sell gift cards but they all have like a $10 limit or something like that like I tried it didn't work um Oh well, yeah, there you go. But I bet no one's going to even redeem it because no one's watching this. Mm 
says they are certified a certified B corporation and I'm not sure what that means but on their website they were really proud of being certified B corporation they are committed to positive social and environmental impact they are renew 100% recycled plastic it says copyright 2010 Sweetwater Co. sourced from Opal Springs, Culver, Oregon. You can call them with questions. Um, if you recycle this bottle in Oregon, you can get 10 cents. So you know, they charged us, when I bought this bottle, they charged us an extra 10 cents for a deposit. And if you recycle it, you get the deposit back. Which, um, I guess is, it's a good system for the environment. And, um, there's probably a lot less litter because of it. Like homeless people can collect bottles and recycle them. I guess that's good. But, it would be kind of annoying... So I'm, I'm so cheap, I would just do it just to make sure I get my money back. Hmm. But imagine buying like a 24 case of water and having to keep track of all 24 of those bottles. If you're, if you're talking about 10 cents each, what is that? 24 bottles? Um, it's like two dollars and forty cents extra per case of water um that that would add up <laughs> I, I drank five thousand um bottles of water if i had recycled all of those bottles i guess i could have gotten five hundred dollars um, Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania don't do uh, they don't do the program like that they don't they don't do the deposit until you pay back for it
Hi guys, how's it going? Let's drink some water. <laughs> drink some water. <laughs> All right, congratulations, Earth 2.0. You're moving on to the next round. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.